All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're back for another tutorial for DS4 Windows to talk about how to work with the dead zone settings inside of the software in order to try and fix the stick drift issues that inevitably will plague most controllers, because let's be honest, there's always been that moment when you've wanted to bludgeon a sibling with your controller, throw it at the wall, or smash it on the ground. We are not always gentle with our controllers, so the sticks wear out from use and they start to have issues. So in order to use that and to make use of the stick drift correction stuff, we're gonna go into the profile. Whatever settings profile you use is fine. Uh, if you're using the default profile, let's maybe duplicate it. And then we'll call this the uh, stick drift fix default. And we'll save that so we don't mess up the default one. And then inside of here, you'll be like, okay, how do I fix this? Pretty simple. There's a controller readings tab at the top above your controller picture. It'll tell you what's going on with your controller. So I'm gonna use this panel over here on the right as an example. So when you have stick drift, you see how that little black dot's freaking out? Let's pretend like that's my left analog stick or my right analog stick. That means it's drifting. The fact that it's wigging out right now, that means it's trying to move and it, it's drifting. So to fix that, we have to make a dead zone. And that's the red circle. That's the dead zone. Anything that happens in the red circle stays in the red circle. We don't talk about it. We definitely don't tell the computer about it. And then once it leaves, when you're actually trying to move it, that's when the computer will actually, you know, read that something's happening. But stick drift, like when you just let your controller sit there and not moving it, it'll look like this. That's how you know. So let's say that your right analog stick's freaking out. Oh, it's doing stuff. How do we fix that, Larry? Well, you go over here to the dead zone. Let's go let's start with the, the right. We need the right stick, so RS. We're gonna go to dead zone, and the default value usually should be like 0 0.08, and then it'll start to kind of fix that. But if you see that this is still drifting out of the red circle without you touching it, don't touch your controller. Just like look at it and be like, okay, I need to increase it a little bit. So let's like put this at like, I don't know, 16. Is it still getting out? Then let's bump that up some more. And then, you know, you can very quickly jump up to the point where it's a lot more manageable. So just slowly increase it till this, when it's at rest, doesn't escape the red circle. And then you should be good. And then you can go up and be like, oh, there's a little bit in the left one too. So we can go up to that dead zone and be like, well, it's moving at about the same amount. Let's just set that to 20, see what it does. And then if it, as long as it doesn't like wander outside, you're fine. That way, when you actually do move and you're like moving around, you can see it very quickly pops out of that red circle. And you wanna make sure when you actually move these joysticks that they're not staying in that little red dead zone because then nothing's gonna get detected so long as it's in that red circle. So that is basically how the dead zone works in order to correct for your controller. If you're here for some reason and you don't use DS4 Windows, you have these settings in a lot of other programs in your settings. You probably just never looked for it. Controller dead zone correction stuff is pretty bog standard at this point. Uh, if you're having this problem and you're like playing a game and you don't have this software and you're on a console, go into your settings, see if there's a dead zone correction. Slowly tick it up until it's not trying to, to move when you're not using your controller. That should help. So when you're done, we're gonna hit save and then boom, we can go here. We can be like, I'm gonna use the stick drift fix profile. You're good to go. Boom, ready to rock. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been a basic instructional tutorial on how to fix stick drift inside of DS4 Windows. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to do the likey, subscribe thing, and bye.